Oh my god. <laughs> Normally I'd celebrate a victory like that, but that doesn't deserve a celebration. That was beyond brutal. Beyond brutal, ladies and gentlemen. Put it this way. For this intro, I've been recording for 90 minutes. I wanted to try and continue the series, so what I did was I reduced the difficulty to a vengeance. I apologize, but I just can't do it in death mode. You saw how many times we tried to do it in the last episode. And yeah, I dare say some of you guys might have suggested that I turn down the difficulty. But yeah, there we are. We did it. Devour of gods. The bugger is down. 
I never want to see that piece of crap ever again. Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of the Terraria Calamity playthrough. We're back for the 49th episode, and contrary to how the last episode ended, the series is not going on hiatus. As I'm sure you saw in the intro there, we did manage to take down the Devour of Gods in the finish. Now, here's the thing, though. It wasn't done in death mode, which, of course, is how we've been playing this series from the very, very start. Master mode, death mode. But here's the thing, my friends. Here's the thing. It was still Revengeance Master mode, which, if you minus off the Infernum mode mod that exists, makes it the second highest difficulty there is available in the Calamity mod itself. Revengeance Master. We did it in Revengeance Master, just not Death Master. So here's what I'm thinking. Maybe at the end of the series on the finale episode, we could return to Death Mode, Master Mode, Devourer of Gods. I mean, yeah, we're going to have ourselves some highly superior gear, way past the point of the Devourer of Gods. But yeah, I still want to get my revenge. I don't care what gear I'm going to wind up using in the death mode, master mode, devourer of gods on the finale episode, whenever that comes. All I know is I want to get my revenge. That guy has claimed my life too many times. So yeah, welcome back to today's episode, my friends, and welcome back to the series. We've got the devourer of gods lore here, and oh my goodness, there is a lot of it. The infamous otherworldly glutton in the flesh. His imposing title was self-granted, but truth made it stick. He is a formidable foe, tell me about it, capable of swallowing gods whole, absorbing their essence in its entirety. I ordered Drayden to armor his gargantuan form so he could safely best even the great gods in single combat. Fittingly, he had a serpent's tongue, he manipulated me incessantly, driving me to awful acts. I recruited him out of desperation, my war had dragged on for decades and I would do anything to have it end. It was then, my negligence was born, my descent began the moment recruiting the scoundrel crossed my mind. His absence of loyalty was clear as day, even at the time. However, I suspect it goes beyond that. The Devourer's alien capabilities and domineering tactics hint that his allegiance lay elsewhere. Is he but one soldier of a malevolence far beyond? All I know is we've got the Devourer of God's Law. The relic is already down here and it is looking rather marvellous. And you may be noticing, yeah, I'm doing some damage to these little dummies here. And that is because what I decided to do since the last episode was actually buy 30 of these here Tesla potions. So now we have a permanent electrify attack, basically. As you can see, top center, there is a lot. And I mean a lot of stuff I want to be going ahead and crafting in today's episode. But the thing is, in order to get these Ascendant Spirit Essences, we're going to have to start farming out some of the hard mode events post doggo. It is going to be an insane grinding episode, but I'm not going to stop until we've got every single thing here. We've got the sponge, the upgrade to the absorber. We have the rampart of deities, which is an upgrade of the diaphic amulet. We've got ourselves the god slayer armor, the melee version, of course. Galaxia, something else we could try to make. We've got the core of the blood god, which, as you guys may or may not know, is the upgrade to the blood pact. And finally, the Asgardian and Aegis. This one might be a bit more difficult to get because we need the Elysian Aegis, which according to you guys is a drop from Providence when he's defeated in the Underworld. Not the Hallow, like we did earlier in the series. So, yeah. Lots of stuff to come, but I do hope that you guys are going to enjoy this episode to come. Do be sure to drop a like if you do want to continue supporting this series. I'd really appreciate it. Consider subscribing, of course, if you don't want to miss out on these last few episodes of this series here. We've still got some epic stuff to come hopefully it's not going to be too much of a headache but i don't know these three bosses one of them i've never ever taken down before which is the exo next so uh yeah either way interesting times to come subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the future episodes and of course if you do want to go on further with your support use code python when ordering any of my apex gaming pcs for a whopping 15 percent off until the 21st of july 2023 or you can head on over to terraria.shop use code python over there for 15 percent off your terraria merch order so then long-winded intro out of the way let's open up this devourer of god's treasure bag and oh man oh man we got ourselves a dev set in here it's lazure's armor Hey. Okay, very good. We've got the Nebulous Core. We've got the Cosmic Discharge. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a minute. 
I read up on the wiki, this is only a 10% drop chance, no? I seem to remember this being a legendary weapon of old. Am I right in thinking that? Hmm. Either way, we've got the Excelsus, we've got Cosmolite Bricks, and of course the almighty Cosmolite Bars. Oh, snappers. What we can do, my friends, is we can head right on over here and we can upgrade our anvil up to a big old cosmic anvil. How big is it? Oh, it's not actually that big at all. That's kind of cool, actually, so I should be able to fit it right on down hither. Yeah! So there we go, my friends. We got some pretty awesome stuff, huh? So that is the cosmic anvil ticked off. We'll remove that from our crafting window. What else have we got? Basically, ascendant spirit essences. Dark sun fragments, that is one of the ascendant spirit essence ingredients. And you get these, I believe from the Mothons in the Solar Eclipse. So yeah, we've got some interesting fun times up ahead, my friends. Ho ho ho! Okay, so let's go and grab out a bunch of these here event summoners. We've got ourselves the Naughty Present, the Pumpkin Moon Medallion, and of course, let's not forget, wait, where is it? The Solar Tablet. I remember in the old days, my friends, I had a Zerg potion on while taking down these events, and it was a hell of an interesting time, to say the very, very least. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't really read out what the Nebulous Core does. 10% increased damage, so nice damage boosting accessory. You'll love to see it. Summons floating Nebula Stars to protect you, and you will survive an attack that would have otherwise killed you and be healed 100 HP. This effect has a 90 second cooldown. Hey, that sounds pretty good, my friends. Maybe something to consider for future boss fight. Oh yeah, we got this thing we can make as well. The Occult Skull Crown. Nightmare Fuel, gotten from the Pumpkin Moon, which we're gonna be doing in today's episode. Oh snap. All right, what I wanna do is see if I can't get myself some nice little reforges. A hundred and forty thousand. Wow, that's insane. Okay, what about the cosmic? Yeah, okay, that's uh, that's pretty loud. I may actually have to turn down the sounds just a little wee bit. Holy crap! So then, here we go, my friends. We're going to start off with the solar eclipse here. Daytime. Solar Eclipse, Battle Cry. Oh my god. <laughs> For any of you guys who don't know, basically, after the Devour of Gods, these events are very much buffed. You have some crazy amounts of health to take down with the dudes in these events now. So, um, yeah? Let's just sort of do this thing, eh? And ladies and gentlemen, my time remind you, this is without the Zerg potion on. I don't even want to know what this is going to be like when I put a Zerg potion on. Ridiculous would be one word. Should we do it? Just for the sake of having some laughs? I think we've been lacking laughs in this series lately, so um yeah. Boom. Oh man, boom. <laughs> 49 enemies nearby. Oh, hey, look at this dude. And the moth one's already dead. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a very real possibility that we might wind up hitting the item despawn limit here. Which would not be ideal. Because we need these Dark Sun Fragments, don't we? So, um, yeah. Let's try and be careful with that. Let's try not to hit the item despawn limit. Alrighty. I think I'm just about done with that grinding. If I could have a nice deathless episode, barring the intro, of course, that would be lovely. All right, we've got a lot of things to pick up here, my friend, so let's go ahead and do exactly that. Okie doke, 156 Dark Sun Fragments. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, excellent. Pretty much everything can just be chucked away. I do not care for it all. All right, I'm pretty okay with not using the Zerg potion. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the Zerg potion away. Also, the solar tablet can, for now, go away as well. I want to have myself a nice, clean inventory. Oh, good grief. All of this is all backed up as well. Interesting. Hey, guys, check this out. It actually turns out I can make 
Galaxia. Yeah, there it is, baby. True Bind Blade, that's exactly what we're looking for. Cosmolite bars, darks and fragments, and we will have ourselves Galaxia. So there we are, Galaxia has been created. And... Okay, this is what it does. Oh, mama. <laughs> Isn't this craziness? Only costs 44 gold to reforge? Wow, that is surprisingly not a lot. Can we get by any chat? Oh my god. You can get legendary 2019 melee damage. So then, it looks like similar to the previous tiers of Biome Blade, you can go ahead and attune this weapon. Presumably, depending on the biome you're in, we've got active attunement here, Phoenix's Pride, Passive Blessing, Capricorn's Blessing. Uh, so what, do we do a little bit of a right click and it does something? Uh, okay. Passive Blessing, Cancer's Blessing. Periodically releases a ring of life-stealing stars around yourself. Wow! Whoa! What the heck is this, man? <laughs> wow! Okay, Ares' is Wrath. That is some craziness. Okay, no, and now we're back to normal. Ares' Wrath. Oh, looks like we can sort of uh, just do a little bit of a cycle around. Oh, dude, that's so cool. All right, Galaxia. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Good old Galaxia. <laughs> oh, my God. Quarter of a million damage per second, I think I saw there at one point. Oh, my God. Gosh, I will take it my friends. The Nightmare Essence absolutely stacking the heck up. My friends, the crazy thing is we don't even have the Zerg potion on and we've still got over a hundred enemies nearby. Oh, look at this. Now things are getting interesting. Maximum wave. Obviously, this is still 1.4.3. We don't have the newly buffed amount of waves to the pumpkin moon. So yeah, still only on 15 waves. In Terraria 1.4.3. Alrighty, I have been doing this for a fair while now. Enough to have nearly 1,000 nightmare fuel, my friends. There are so many drops now on the floor, it is utterly ridiculous, and I can't possibly be expected to go through and pick them all up. There's just no point. All of this stuff is stuff I already have. Things are about to get festive. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Frost Moon with a battle cry. Bada bing, bada boom. Wait, I want to have a specific attunement. Not that one. Not that one. Yeah, the circly circle. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Wave 7, 8, uh, 9, 10. Yeah, this ain't taking very long now, is it? <laughs> Utter craziness. No other word for it. Utter craziness. <laughs> Time to deactivate the battle cry. I think so, my friends. I think so. Right. Let's see if we can continue poning the poop out of people. I'm actually going to die again here. Hang on a minute. That's unacceptable if you ask me. We are this late into the game and we're dying. No way, Jose. I think what I'll do, my friends, similar to the pumpkin moon, is we'll go for just under a thousand-ish. I don't really have any reason for going just under a thousand. Maybe we just go for, you know, a thousand, and then hopefully that'll be enough for us to not really have to do this again. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that guy's dead, and that guy's dead. This guy over here is going to die as well. Yes, you are. Alrighty. I think we're just about done, my friends. Pirates are approaching. They bloody well are not. <laughs> Let's get rid of that, shall we? So there we have it. 960 endothermic energy. That was the last piece of the puzzle. So we can start making ourselves some ascended spirit essences and really start going to town in terms of our cosmic upgrades. So then, a quick relog just to clear the world of all of the items on the ground. And ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to actually do this thing. Post lunatic cultist materials. There it is. Endothermic thermic energy, nightmare fuel, dark sun fragments, and of course, phantoplasm. Oh, snap, snap, snap. There's going to be a lot of things done here, my friends. Uh, oh, it's actually made at the ancient manipulator. 
Okie doke. So we've got 4, 8, 11, 13, 15, 19, 23. We need 23 Ascendant Spirit Essences. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Go on. Yeah, let's get this all done. There we are. Actually being able to make all of it. Absolutely brilliant. And at this point, we need to tally up all of the Cosmolite bars we need. Needless to say, I don't think we've got enough right now. But the good news is this. We can head on over to a certain Operator NPC. And not only can we get ourselves a treasure bag, but we can also kill two birds with one stone. Because I'll tell you what we don't have. A Devourer of Gods, a Mask, Cosmic Worm Scarf, Staff of the Mech Worm, Obliterator. Oh, it's a yo-yo. Oh, that's kind of cool. We've already got the Excelsors. So we pretty much just got to wind up selling there. Anything unique that we get, I'm going to keep. We've got the Nebulous Core. We don't have a Cosmic Worm Scarf, but it's just a vanity thing. So I'm not really too fussed about it. What I am fussed about is trying to get myself one of those beautiful masks. All right, another one. What do we got? Uh, more of the same. We've got another weapon here. The Death Hail Staff, 641 damage. Okay, very cool. Nope, nothing in that one. We're getting so many Cosmolite bars though, and I tell you what, I am here for it. It does exist, I just seem to be getting criminally unlucky in terms of not being able to get this darn stuff. I don't know, man, I'm starting to, uh, I'm starting to doubt things. The Norfleet, that is another unique weapon. Kind of cool. There it is. Wow, that um, that took a very, very, very long time and a good amount of treasure bags. In fact, a hell of a lot of treasure bags, in fact. But the fact of the matter is this, Devourer of Gods. I mean, yeah, we took him down in Revengeance Master Mode, not Death Master Mode. But we still did a pretty good job. And uh, yeah, just to mention, yeah, we are back on death mode right now. We haven't permanently switched down to Revengeance. So don't worry, I'm not about to try and skimp out on you folks. But basically, I just kind of figured it's the lesser of two evils. Either the series goes on hold and I'll probably get flamed for not finishing series again. Or I lower the difficulty and be able to progress and get the series finished. And then maybe we just come back to it back on the max difficulty later on. So that's what I decided to go for. I just want to get this series finished, my friends, as I keep saying. So, yeah, it's as simple as that. I just want to keep going. I want to make progress. Staff of the Mech Worm, eh? Seems to be a direct upgrade to the, what is it, the Stardust Dragon Staff, right? I mean, it gets longer the more amount of minion slots you have. So, yeah, this guy is pretty long and it does seem to do a fair amount of damage. Yeah, look at all those pink values there. Brilliant. All right, now it's time for some fun, my friends. We can start crafting a whole new bunch of stuff. We have ourselves the God Slayer armor. We are going to make this. There is the chest plate. We're looking for the melee damage one, which is this one right here. And of course, some pants. Going from 171 defense up to 180. That's only an increase of nine. That's not a great deal. But look at this. Allows you to dash for an immense distance in eight directions. Enemies you dash take massive damage. During the dash, you are immune to most debuffs. Enemies are more likely to target you. Taking over 80 damage in one hit will cause you to release a swarm of high damage god killer darts. Enemies take a lot of damage when they hit you. An attack that would deal 80 damage or less will have its damage reduced to one. Wow. So then, all that leaves us with, my friends, is a bunch of accessories. We have the Sponge, Rampart of Deities, Core of the Blood God, Asgardian Ages. Again, that'll be the more difficult one to get, perhaps. We'll see how the Providence boss goes in just a bit. And then we've got the Occult Skull Crown. So, first up is the Sponge. 20 defense. 10% increased damage reduction, plus 30 life and mana, 5% increased movement and jump speed, standing still boosts life and mana regen. Enemies take damage when they touch you, you emit a cloud of mushroom spores when you are hit. 6.25% of the damage from enemy attacks is absorbed and converted into healing, grants immunity to armor crunch. The next thing we're going to make, ladies and gentlemen, is the occult skull crown. Where is that made? Way over here. You constantly 
only gain rage over time and rage does not fade away when out of combat. Converts certain debuffs into buffs and extends their duration. Adrenaline charge is 20% faster. Holy guacamole. Increases max movement speed and acceleration by 5%. So we've got the flesh totem here and the blood pact. And here it is, the core of the blood god. Boosts your HP by 15%. At this point in the game, that is a pretty significant amount of health. Healing potions are 25% more effective. Halves enemy contact damage. When you take contact damage, this effect has a 20 second cooldown. Nice. So for the next accessory, which is going to be the Rampart of Deities, we need a Frozen Shield, which is something we didn't have. It requires a Paladin Shield and the Frozen Turtle Shell. But believe it or not, we didn't have one. But check this out. You can make one. Three Turtle Shells and nine Essences of Helium at an Ice Machine, which I think is over here. Yeah. Excellent. There is the Frozen Shield. And my friends, we should now be able to do this. Not right there, but right there. Rampart of Deities. So then, ladies and gentlemen, now is where the fun times begin. We have to actually take down Providence down in the underworld. The good news is, we do, of course, have ourselves an arena. Whether or not it's going to be enough remains to be seen. So we've got Warding on the sponge because it seems like a very sort of defensive accessory. I feel like that makes sense. Warding on the Occult Skullcrown simply because, again, it gives a bit of defense. Warding now seems to give 10 defense extra as opposed to just 8 or 6 previously or even 4. Wow, that's some craziness right there. Rampart of Deities yet again. I think a bit of warding. So then, God Slayer armor. I've got all of my new accessories on. I have a whopping 905 health now, which is just insane. And even more insane, 258 defense. Okie dokie. Let's see how this goes, eh? What we can't do is get too far ahead of ourselves, of course. There's going to be a whole bunch of projectiles flying towards us. Yep, there they are. And we're already almost dead. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I forgot about that phase. Ah, damn. I forgot about that. You go too far away from Providence and uh, she starts getting a little bit annoyed. I just really hope that this Elysian Aegis is a guaranteed drop from the underworld Providence. Only if it isn't, then that's going to kind of suck. Yeah, okay. I'm noticing something here. There's a lot of holes in my platforms and we need to do something about that because that's actually kind of annoying. The amount of times I fell through those platforms and it affected my ability to dodge attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have been a colossal moron. I totally forgot. You're not supposed to take down Providence during nighttime. Otherwise, she will get some insane damage buffs against you. Yeah, okay. Um, I should probably do myself a favor and make sure that it's daytime when I try to take this gal down, eh? All right, so it is daytime right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this thing again. Let's not die again. Bada bing, bada boom. Here she is. Ladies and gentlemen, this should be a bit easier this time, I hope. We do have ourselves slightly less damage that she's doing now, so we've got that going for us at the very least. Bit of adrenaline to finish it off. Hey, 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 hey. Get wrecked, you son of a gun. Yeah, I'll take it. Right, Elysian Aegis, yes? Yeah. Off comes Asgard's Valor. Popping down to the Cosmic Anvil. And can we do this thing? There it is. Asgardian Aegis. Quite a lot of cosmic upgrades in today's episode. Hey, eh, my friends? Not bad. What I'd like to do is get a bit of warding on here. Because then it will grant us a whopping 38 defense in one accessory. So there it is. <laughs> It's crazy. There we are. 925 health right now. Immune to most debuffs plus 40 max life and increased life regen. Grants a supreme god slayer flame dash. Can be used to ram enemies. You can apparently activate buffs to all damage, crit chance and defense. Activating this buff will reduce your movement speed and increase enemy aggro. And plus 20 defense when submerged in liquid. So then, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long one today. But I really do hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Very, very active action pack.
fact, very, very full of grinding materials and full of poning the devour of gods. So yeah, my friends, before wrapping up, of course, we've actually got two comments of the day to do. One from the last episode, because we didn't do one in the last episode, because I was just so done. And one for today. So starting off with the last one, cringe underscore lord 1159 says, yeah, devour of gods is usually a major roadblock for a lot of players before the last few bosses. But don't worry, it only gets harder from here. Yeah, I'm well aware. I am well, well aware. Don't you worry about it, buddy. Well, I say don't you worry about it, but um, if the Devourer of Gods and Old Duke have driven me to the very, very edge of my sanity, then, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's quite possible that the last few episodes of this series, where hopefully we'll take down the last few bosses, they might not be pretty. So I'm just going to warn you guys in advance. Expect rages. Expect me to be just completely done with sometimes i don't know but uh yeah just bear with me i'll get there in the finish there'll be some way forward and whatever way forward it is be it lowering the difficulty perhaps and then coming back to it later yeah i'll take it i want to get this series done my friends we're so close to the finish now and i really do want to get this done anyways moving on to the next comment alternate dan 4562 he's been saying this for a fair while but i figured i'd shout it out anyway pro tip when something is charging you such as the devourer of god's head use the asgard's valor dash to ram into it and negate all contact damage it takes some practice but you can get a flow for it and it makes fights much easier works with elysian aegis too. I'm really hoping that it also works with the Asgardian Ages. I would assume it does. But yeah, that is one thing I did start trying to do in a lot of my attempts sort of off camera between the, you know, death targes you've basically been seeing. So yeah, I appreciate the tip there, buddy. And it's definitely something I'm going to try and keep in mind going forth. So, my friends, for now, though, it's time to wrap up the episode. Thank you very much for watching. Like I say, been a longer one than usual, but if you have enjoyed today's episode, please do be sure to drop a like beneath the video. I really do hope that you won't think I'm, like, skimping out on you guys. I just want to finish the series. I don't want to spend multiple episodes on one boss because after a while, it just gets boring for you guys to watch, right? So, yeah. Hopefully it's okay with you. I'll come back in the finale episode. We'll try and take down the Devourer of Gods again in death mode, but with a vastly superior loadout. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed today's episode, drop a like. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for all of your patience and support, and especially your hints and tips and suggestions in the last episode. Truly appreciate you folks. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.